Teddy Pimblett pulls off another big finish against Jordan Levitt. And there was a lot of talk going between the two, but they had mutual respect afterward. And not only from the fight itself that Petty was able to get another finish in, very sneaky and creative the way he pulled off that knee into the eventual back take. I mean, stuff you don't normally see. It was crafty for such a young fighter like that. But not just the fight itself. Petty Pimblett deserves a lot of respect, even for all he was dealing with going into the fight. He talked about it afterward that, you know, he dealt with some loved ones passing away. He did this for them, so you could only imagine how that news could have negatively affect anybody in the world but Petty used that energy to get this big one and dedicated to them and I really love I have a newfound respect for Patty Pimblett for the way he was talking about men's issues with mental illness or anything they're dealing with that they can't talk with anybody else so they have to find a solution with their own hands and sometimes that could be a dangerous method I majored in psychology and whenever I can I always want to address the issue because it's a huge problem that nobody really wants to talk about it was a very important message for someone on that platform to say something like this and I just want to reiterate it here, if a man is having some kind of mental issue and they need help, they should find the help regardless of what society has programmed men to be like. Not to get too deep into it, but I do know that, you know, sometimes men dealing with their own problems can be a positive thing. But when mental illness is involved, then it's almost never a good thing. It's almost always dangerous. And let's talk about that fight because objectively speaking, as you know, I'm always honest about the analysis on this. Patty Pimble had a pretty rough first round early on. I think he got surprised about Jordan Levitt's physical strength. I mean, the guy looked so strong to hold him against the cage like that. Patty had a couple attempts to reverse the position, but he got stonewalled. Levitt is a very strong guy. And even picking Patty up and slamming him and stuff like that, Patty had to resort into different kind of things to be a lot more crafty in the mix. He started to pull the guillotines and stuff, even though they were very risky. One of them, he completely lost the position, didn't even get near the guillotine, but the one prior... He actually got it pretty close. I personally never really liked the arm in guillotine. It's a lot harder to pull that off. And still a lot of fighters go to it to try to chase a finish when it should be used more as a way to transition or reverse, sweep the opponent and get a better position so they can lock up something better or just ultimately ride out and build upon the newfound position they settled in. And you saw the difference when he went for the high elbow guillotine later in the fight and it was a lot tighter to the point where Levitt had to get on the ground, give up the position completely and try to get Patty Pimblett into his own side control to take away the squeeze and the leverage of the high elbow guillotine. Now, firstly, I want to get this out of the way about the scoring of the first round. It seems like a lot of people believe that Levitt won that first round when he did not. It just goes against what the rules state. All Levitt really had was control against the cage, control on the ground, and he had one slam. Well, control is written out in the rules as something that's not significant at all. In fact, you rarely ever score control. Petty Pimplet had two chokes that got close, the high elbow guillotine and the guillotine he pulled before that, where they were kind of scrambling for the position and then Petty eventually got him into a deep one, but Levitt was able to scramble his way out of there. And also Petty got his back at the end of the round. Those are way more significant and in terms of what the rules state, closer to a potential finish of the fight. Who got closer to finishing the fight? It was definitely not Jordan Levitt. It was 100%. Patty Pimblett on multiple occasions. So because of the impact of what Patty Pimblett did, even though he barely had any control, he won the round due to how the rules are written. But the reason why Jordan Levitt was getting caught off guard by all of this is he was trying to make the fight slower than it should have been. He tried to slow down the action, tie up Patty Pimblett, ultimately just resorted to slams in any way to elevate the impact of the fight. But for the most part, he looked to just neutralize the whole fight. And these quick bursts from Patty Pimblett was catching him off guard, specifically with the grappling. Patty Pimblett still has a lot more to work on when it comes to his striking. I mean, he looked explosive and powerful throwing punches from a distance, but nothing was measured. He would throw big left hooks into long stretched out right hands from a distance and they always fell short. And Jordan Levitt, even though he's a defensively minded striker, he's not that adept at it who's not really that much of an intricate defensive striker, Patty was still able not to find any punches on him. And if you can't find punches on Levitt, there's a lot of guys in the top 10 he's not going to find punches on. And the faster that Patty Pimble is rising with his stardom, the faster he's going to get a ranked opponent. People are already calling out for him to fight a top 15. And the light heavyweight's top 15 is like the equivalent of a lot of divisions top 10, top 7. You know, if he fights someone like Demir Ismagulov or you know, Armin Saryukian or any of these guys lower in the top 15, he's definitely not going to hit them either. And he's got to resort to grappling with much stronger grapplers, which this division has resorted to. There's a lot of big grapplers and wrestlers in the lightweight division that are rising inside the top 15. So if he cannot get his striking together when it comes to measuring off the jab, throwing a lot of feints and stuff like that, using proper footwork to get in places to land his big powerful strikes because he does have a lot of power, but he just doesn't have the means to land those shots on opponents without it getting chaotic. 
And a lot of the fighters in the top 15 are good under pressure. They're good under chaos. So some of the lesser guys that Paddy Pimble fought previously, they weren't that experienced in those kind of fights. So they got caught in reckless exchanges. The better guys in the lightweight division are not. So that is why it's very important for Paddy Pimblett to not focus so much on knocking opponents out, but more focus on getting into the positions to knock his opponents out. Because once he gets that together, he can actually be a threat to the contenders because his jiu-jitsu is already legit. He's a crafty and creative grappler. He gets a striking together with a good physique that he has for the lightweight division. He could put a lot of things together and hurt a lot of opponents. And I really want to talk about that knee. That was such an amazing attack of his. And the way he set it up was actually in a very similar position that most fighters get into. So it makes me believe that what he did here can be somewhat mimicked by anybody. When their back is up against the cage and the opponent is trying to go under for a double leg. So they both have an over-under body lock on each other. And instead of breaking the grip, Jordan Levitt tried to just power through it into a double leg. While Patty still had the grip, and that was the mistake here. If he was able to open up Patty's grip and separate his hands, Patty would not have been able to get this right hand, right arm, in between himself and Jordan Levitt's head. That arm right there is going to relieve a lot of the strength and leverage from Jordan Levitt's takedown. And using that arm, he was able to snatch onto what seemingly looked like a modified rear naked choke, but he had Levitt's arm in there, so the choke itself was not super deep. At least theoretically, we don't know exactly how Levitt felt under that choke. But he was in there for a bit and it didn't seem like he was losing strength it didn't look like he was passing out or anything like that and he made the mistake of trying to get back into the double leg took his hands off of the mat and this made him a standing opponent and with a similar position a very interesting thing that patty did was he brought his legs away so he's almost like on the entire right side of levitt whereas before when levitt was going for the double leg patty's legs were in front of levitt this is very important. With Patty maneuvering his legs to the side, he was able to get that angle for the knee, which eventually caused the back take. And the back take eventually led to the submission. So Patty brought that right leg backwards. Look how far off he is on the right side, completely angling off on Levitt. So Levitt really doesn't have much to reach for besides that left leg. And he gets kneed in the head and gets hurt. And the reason why we know he got hurt is because he didn't really have much defense to Patty Pimblet rotating around to get his back. For him to allow Patty to get around him like this, I mean, he tried to grab onto the right leg, but he was super late. Patty used that late attempt from Levitt to stop that transition as a way to body triangle in there. He got a body triangle on Levitt, which is a very secure hold on the opponent. With Levitt's right arm in there, he was almost entirely defenseless. He only had his left arm to defend himself with, while Patty has both of his arms. When something like this happens to a fighter, it's almost guaranteed they lost the fight. Because you can simply do what Patty did. Hold off that arm with your left hand, and then bring your right arm around for the choke, and he has nothing to defend it with. That's it. It's pretty simple. Patty Pimplet, fantastic when good rear naked choke i'm very impressed by the setup for the knee and he's definitely a dangerous opponent i'm very curious to see how he evolves from this how much he gets better from this this was his most difficult fight in the ufc on paper jordan levitt's never been finished before he only had one loss in his career they're the same age and everything similar stature when it comes to height and reach and stuff and patty even with a shaky first round he was able to eventually get the win so no matter how the fight is looking Patty Pimblet is always going to be in there to finish you. Leave in the comments below who do you guys want to see him fight next because it's interesting. There's a lot of potential opponents for Patty Pimblet. I know a lot of people still want to see the Ilya Taporia fight. People want to see him fight Atman Azaitar. I think the Azaitar fight makes more sense now. Seeing him get past Levitt the way he did, Azaitar could be a next good step up in competition. Is it too much too soon? That's the kind of risk you got to take in the lightweight division, man. Most guys are going to be difficult to beat. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. And if you did, make sure to give this a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.